Now on Overnight. I believe in reason and common sense. Leith Van Onselen from Macro Business with a treasury of common sense. Common sense never goes out of style. Leith joins us on the program every week. G'day, mate. G'day, Clinton. How are you? I'm good, mate. Um, these latest immigration figures, again, it shows the federal government's estimates are way off. That's right, mate. Unfortunately, this, this has almost become a bit of a meme, hasn't it? So uh, listeners might recall that uh, the Albanese government's net overseas migration projections have basically routinely underestimated the actual results ever since they came into office. So in last year's federal budget, so we're talking about May 2023, yep. the Albanese government projected 400,000 net overseas migration for the last financial year. So this is 2022-2023. And literally, you know, about six weeks later, uh, once the financial year was shut, um, the Australian Bureau of Statistics subsequently uh, released data showing that net overseas migration was actually close to 530,000. So they missed by about 130,000. And then last year's budget for this financial year projected that net overseas migration would be 315,000. This was then raised to 375,000 in December's My EFO and then to 395,000 in last month's federal budget. So they keep ramping it up. Now, on Wednesday, uh, the, the Australian Bureau of Statistics released data on net permanent and long-term arrivals. So this is their sort of monthly mm-hmm. read on net migration. It's not the official data, but it's a, you know, it's a very good leading indicator of what the official data is going to say. And what it showed is that, that uh, a net migration has certainly passed its peak, so that's good news, but it still remains at very high, historically high levels that are likely to easily exceed the you know, last month's budget forecast. So... After peaking in February at just under 500,000 net per and long-term arrivals annually, uh, it re- it's retraced to nearly 490,000 in the year to April, so it has come off a bit, but it's still running way, way above uh, what, what the federal government's you know, budget just last month suggested, with only two months to go. And actually, later on today, uh, Clinton will actually receive the official net overseas migration data for the last calendar year. So... The official data, we, we, at the moment, we only have it to the September quarter of 2023. And it's always about, runs about six months behind uh, what, you know, behind. It's always uh, forward, backward looking. So later on today, we'll get the data up to the 31 December 2023. And I'm expected to, you know, be very close to the September figure, which was a record high uh, of nearly 550,000. And what the data basically suggests is that the Albanese government's forecasts, obviously, around migration are, you know, still understated. And that uh, as a result, this rental crisis that we've been experiencing for a long time is going to likely continue, especially with dwelling construction falling. So, so the concern will be that, and again, significant promises have been made for the coming financial year. The concern will be that we probably don't have a lot of confidence in what those forecasts for the next coming year are, are going to be. Yeah, and, and, and justifiably so. I mean, you know, the, the government has consistently, since they've come into office, under, underestimated what the migration numbers are going to be. So, you know, as, as I said, they said it's going to be 395000 for this financial year. We, you know, we've only got a couple of weeks to go there. And then next financial year, it's supposed to come in at 260000 And I think it's 250000 the year after, and then down to the long-run average in the intergenerational report of 235000 a year. So... Look, definitely the numbers are going the right way. I mean, it, it has passed its peak. I think this, you know, the, the crackdown on student visas, et cetera, is, is having an impact. But it's just whether or not it comes down as quickly as they project. And at the moment, they you know, they seem to be missing. I received the Housing Industry Association's press release yesterday, and, and their press release said that Australia is not bringing enough skilled migrants into the country. And, and I've spoken to the HIO about this in the last couple of weeks as well, but we're not bringing enough skilled migration migrants into the country to be able to meet the housing targets that have been set out by the Albanese government. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, look, I, I received that media release as well and actually agree with them. It's, it's certainly a, an absolute debacle. So listeners might recall that um, you know, there was a lot of talk a week or so ago that tradies and construction workers have been excluded from the, dr- the draft skills priority list for migrants. Whereas, you know, professions like yoga instructors, martial yes, artists, yes. dog handlers, and all these areas that we don't actually need, um, you know, have, have been included on the list, which is just nonsensical. And then this is coming at the same time as annual dwelling approvals, which is basically a forward indicator of, you know, future housing construction, has collapsed to around 150000 a year. 
which is 90,000 less than the Albanese government's housing construction target of 240,000 a year. Now, on Wednesday, the Housing Industry Association, as you said, released a media release, and it basically claimed that the skilled migration system, as it currently stands, is, is basically worsening the housing shortages and needs a complete overhaul. And they, um, they basically said that Australia is not bringing in enough skilled migrants into Australia to build 170. Thousand homes a year, let alone the 240,000, which is the target. And they actually gave some numbers which were quite startling, I thought. Um, so the, the HIA said that in the first nine months of this financial year, so the 30th of March 2024, they're only brought in about 1,350,000 know, workers in construction trades, which compares to a net overseas migration over the same nine month period of probably around 375,000. So that's a massive imbalance. So we're only bringing about 1,350 workers in construction, yet we've got net overseas migration, which is basically population demand, let's face it, of probably three, around 375,000 over that same nine-month period. So I think the HIA is right to assert that Australia's migration system is actually making the situation worse because effectively we're importing humongous amounts of people who obviously need housing. Uh, which is increasing demand for housing, yet these imported migrants aren't actually adding to housing supply because you know a tiny, tiny percentage of them, about one percent, or not even that, um, are actually working in the housing sector to to boost supply. And, and this is actually you know uh, empirically present in the data, which shows that migrants are heavily underrepresented in, in the construction industry. So. The, the share of migrants working in the economy generally is a lot higher than the share of migrants working in construction. So as a result, Australia finds itself constantly short of housing and infrastructure because we're effectively importing all, you know, more users of that housing infrastructure, but the people that we're importing aren't working in the areas that can actually create that housing infrastructure. So it's an absolute diabolical situation. And I think what it basically tells you is that Australia needs two things. It needs a much smaller migrant intake and that migrant intake needs to be focused on the skills that we actually need, not just you know bringing in people to work as martial artists and yoga instructors and all these people servicing industries that are quite frankly low productivity and you know don't they're, they're, they're not essential skills effectively. And I think uh, more generally, the migration intake needs to be calibrated to a level that's below the nation's capacity to build housing and infrastructure. That seems very logical. And I'd argue for the last twenty years, it's been running well above those. Those things, so it's been well running well above our capacity to build housing infrastructure, and that's why we've got you know this worsening congestion and uh, obviously the housing crisis across Australia's major capital cities. I think it's pretty you know obvious for anybody who lives in Melbourne, Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane to uh, you know understand that. A few less yoga instructors and dog handlers would help. Hey, great to talk to you, Luke. We'll catch up next week. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Speak to you next time, Luke Van Oslin from Macro Business.